Hi everyone, it's Mr. Hamilton here. This video is all about mastering factoring. We're going to deal with perfect squares and differences of squares. Now the first thing I'm going to look at is this. Some of us, when we go a plus b squared, we think that that is a squared plus b squared. But I'm here to tell you that's actually not the case. If we take a plus b squared, and we write that out as a plus b times a plus b, we could do FOIL, first, outside, inside, last. So if you don't know what that stands for, there it is. First, outside, inside, last. And so if we FOIL this out, this is called expanding. When we go this direction, it's expanding. And you're like, this is a video of factoring. Well, it's going to go the other way in a second once we understand this. So if we expand this, then what we get, eventually, if we multiply the first outside inside last now, is a times a is a squared. a times b is a b. So those are the outside terms. Now, the inside terms is b times a. Well, that's a, b again, because the order of multiplication doesn't matter. And then the last terms, b times b is b squared. And so what you can see happens here when you combine these two like terms in the middle, we get 2ab in the middle and plus b squared. So what's the difference between what's up here and what's down there? Well, it's this term right there, that middle term. So the first thing to keep in mind, and this is for perfect squares, is that a plus b squared is going to be equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And so if we're trying to factor it, we're trying to go this way. And if we're trying to expand, we go the other way. And so this video is going to be all about how to factor it. Now the other thing we want to keep in mind is what happens if that's a negative. So if it's a minus b all squared, then we're going to get a squared minus 2ab, and you can expand it out using FOIL again, and then plus b squared. And so the only real difference between these is that the sign between the terms is what the sign is before the second term. So let's go ahead and do a couple of examples of perfect squares. So there's the two forms that we just worked out. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to recognize when something is in those forms and then work backwards in each of these cases. So here's the first example. The first example is 4x squared plus 20x plus 25. And let's see what happens when I try to go to factor that. We could try to go like we did before and find two numbers that add to 20, multiply to 4 times 25, which is 100. That's going to take a little bit of work because we have to decompose it. But if we can recognize the perfect square, we can simplify our life and make things go even quicker. So let's try to do that. What we're trying to do is we're trying to say, hey, can I take the square root of that first term? Well, it might be helpful to do this first. Let's list what perfect squares actually are. 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, and 144. Depends what your teacher wants, but I would say that that is a good uh, first look at those. That's from 1 times 1 all the way to 12 times 12. So we look at the first and last terms and we say, can we take the square root of either of those? And we can if it's one of those perfect squares. So I can take the square root of 4x squared, and that's written as 2x. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to write it like this. I'm going to take the square root of that first one. I'm going to say, can I take the square root of this last one? Well, I can, right? That's the square root of 25 is 5. And then I want to check the middle term, and I want to see, is that middle term 2 times the first terms, the square root of the first term? times the square root of the last term. The reason I'm saying square root is because remember the first term is squared and the last term is squared. So the square root of it is a and the square root of the other is b. If you're not with me on that, stay with me because it's going to make sense here in a minute. So I'm going to go 2 times 2x times 5. Just taking these two numbers here, 2x and 5, and multiplying them times 2. And then when I multiply them together, I get 20x. And so that means it's a perfect square. And so what I could do here is I could actually write this out as a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So watch this. I'm going to write it as the a term is 2x. That's all squared. 2x squared gives me 4x squared. The plus 2 times a times b, so 2 times 2x times 5, right? Remember, this is the a term. This is the b term. So 2 times a times b. 
gives me 20x. So I have exactly what's in the blue up above. And then the last one, b squared, is 5 all squared. And so you can see here I've got a squared, 4x squared, plus 2 times a times b, 20x, plus b, 5 squared. And so because that is a perfect square, we can go backwards in that and write it as a plus b all squared. Well, the a term is 2x, the b term is 5, 2x plus 5 squared. This line here is not really needed. But the reason I've done the line above is because I want you to check to make sure that middle term works. Sometimes it will be that you have a perfect square at the beginning and end, but 2 times the a times the b won't actually be the middle term. In that case, you actually have to go ahead and factor by decomposition and find two numbers that add to the middle term, multiply to the first term times the last term. Here's a second example. Number two. This one is 18x squared minus 48x plus 32. At first glance, that doesn't look like anything that would be a perfect square, and it looks like we have to find two numbers that add to negative 48, multiply to 18 times 32. But the first thing we should always do when we factor is we should always start by trying to take a common factor out of all these. If I take a 2 out of all of them, I get 9x squared minus 24x plus 16. Well, now we should start recognizing some things here. In fact, we should recognize the 9x, like that's, that's one, that one right there, and the 16, that's that one right there. Those we can both take the square root of. So let's check the middle term to see if it works. So I'm going to take the square root of the first term, that's 3x, so that would be the a term if this works. I'm going to take the square root of the 16, that's going to be 4, that would be the b term if this works. I'm going to go 2 times 3x times 4. 2 times 3x is 6x times 4 is 24x. It works. And so what I can do here is I can write this as 2 times, well the a term was 3x, the b term is 4, but in this case because I have a minus sign, it's going to be minus in the brackets. You see the negative there? So this is going to be 3x minus 4 all squared. And the 2 just stays out in front because it's 2 times that. All right, so there's the perfect squares. Let's have a look at the difference of squares now. At the end of this video, I'm going to put them all together, and we're going to do a perfect square and a difference of squares in the same question. Now let's talk about the difference of squares. If I have a plus b times a minus b, what will that become? Well, again, let's foil that out. a times a is a squared. a times the negative b is the outside terms. That's going to give me minus a times b because of alphabetical order how I write them. b times a is the same as a times b. The inside terms, b times a, again, is the same as a times b. It's a funny looking a. This is a times b. And then b times negative b is minus b squared. Well, what do you notice happens when you expand this out? Well, these two terms are equal and opposite. One is negative AB, one is positive AB. So what it simplifies to is A squared minus B squared. So if you ever see two terms and they're both perfect squares, you notice I still have my perfect squares listed here on the right side, and they're separated by a minus sign. They have to be separated by a minus sign or it's not going to work. If they are, then we can factor it by going this way. Remember, this is the factoring direction. This is the expanding direction. All right, factoring always gets it in brackets. That is the key. So let's look at a couple of examples of this. We'll call this example one for the difference of squares. 16x squared minus 121. Well, we can take the square root of the first term. It's 4x. We can take the square root of the last term. It's 11. What I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to write it as an a term in all squared and a b term all squared. Watch this. I'm going to write it as 4x all squared, because that's what 16x squared is. Because in what's above, the squared only applies to the x. But I want the square to apply the whole term, not just the x. Minus, and then I've got 11 squared. So what that means is the a term is 4x. The b term is 11. And you can see from up above here, I write it as 4x plus 11 times 4x minus 11. And you're done. You've completely factored that. Just in case that wouldn't look clear to you, that's an 11 in the brackets there. Let's do the next example here. Number two, 50x squared minus 98y squared. 
At first glance, it doesn't look like I can do this with a difference of squares because I don't have one of the numbers along the right. But again, just like I did in the second example of the perfect square, I want to try to common factor first. I can take a 2 out of both of these. This leaves me with 25x squared minus 49y squared. Now we also, the other thing here is that we've got this y squared. So it's a little different than the last one, but it's going to have the same way that it's going to apply. So let's see how that works. We now can see that we've got two terms with a minus between them. Therefore, it's likely going to be a difference of squares. Let's see. Can we take the square root of the first term? We can. It's 5x. The square of the last term is 7y. So let's write it out like that. 5x, all squared, minus 7y, all squared. And so we can write that as 2 times, my a term is 5x, my b term is 7y, 5x plus 7y, 5x minus 7y. That y didn't really do anything to it, it just, we just had to make sure that we put that in the brackets and considered that as part of the b term. So there you go. Go back and practice those again, look for more practice on that, and when you're ready, let's put both these things together with the final example in this video. So are you ready? Let's see if we can put both together in the same example. So here we have four terms. And what we're used to doing with four terms is something, maybe if we had something like this, x squared plus 4x plus 2x plus 8, what we would have done is we would have factored by grouping. We would have looked at the first two terms and said I can take an x out of that and I'm left with x plus 4. And then I can, out of the last two terms, I can take a 2 out of that and I'm left with x plus 4. And because these two things in the brackets are the same, I can write this as x plus 2 times x plus 4. Well, let's see if we can try that example here. If I look at the first two terms, I go and I try to common factor an x out. I'm left with x plus 4. But I can't common factor anything out of the next two terms. Even if I just took a 1 out, I'm left with 4 minus 81y squared. And because those aren't the same, I can't go ahead and say x plus 1 times anything. So that's not going to work here. It's worked all the way until now, but it's not going to work here. So let's see what else we can do. The first thing to recognize, and just make sure that's a plus there, the first thing to recognize is that we have a perfect square right there. And so if we can find a perfect square in three of the four terms, we're actually going to find that's helpful. Let's see what we can do here. Let's take the square root of the first term, that's x, the square root of the last term, that's 2, and now 2 times that a term, which is x, times that b term, which is 2. And let's see, is it equal to 4x? It is indeed. So that what that means is that's x and a 2. And because this sign here is a plus, the sign between them is a plus, it's x plus 2 all squared. Now, what about this minus 81y squared? It seems like I've only factored three terms, but not the fourth. Are you seeing a term squared minus another term squared? This is a difference of squares still. So what we get here is we get x plus 2 all squared. I'm going to keep that the same. But then we're going to subtract 9y all squared. And so my a term now is x plus 2. It can be more than one term provided it's all in brackets and squared. My b term is 9y squared. And so what I'm going to do here is remember before we had a squared minus b squared. When we factored that, that became a plus b times a minus b. And so I'm going to write this out as the a term is x plus 2, a plus b, b is 9y, and then x plus 2 minus b, minus 9y. And that's how you do it. And the last thing we would do here is we typically write things in alphabetical order with the non-variable term last. And so what I'm going to do is just change this to be x plus 9y plus 2. It doesn't matter what way you, order, you add those. And then x plus not plus, it's going to be minus 9y plus 2. And so I'm just going to be subtracting the 9y before I add the 2. So that now is your final answer for that challenge question that has both the perfect square and the difference of squares between them. So look for that. All the best as you do those and hope this video is helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe.